The word of God is light. The word of God is truth. The word of God is life. Join God's servant, Apostle Jonathan Shokonya of Family Worship Experience International as we journey into the reality of kingdom truth. Lift your hands, wherever inside, outside, lift your hands. Kabaro Satebele Gatila, Rekosoba Gatila. I want you to pray and say, Lord, tonight I came for an experience. I came for an encounter. Lord, tonight may my life not be the same. Come and go ahead, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Lord, may my life not be the same. Hold up a shot of Brianda Katila. Shake at the Baranda Proskata Belagan in the bench. Let Kora Bakatila Brande. Shota Barada Bakaskila Barada Besha. Come and go ahead and pray. I want to hear you praying. Do we have prayer for believers in this house, inside, outside? Let Kabarande Koso Brande Katila. Rekati Balada Bakoso Brekatila. Come and pray. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory. Let it fill this place. Let it fill my life. Have that young man. I came with an expectation tonight. I came to be transformed tonight. I came to be blessed tonight. I came to carry something tonight. I didn't come to see who came for the meeting or not. Let the atmosphere to now be charged. Let it be prepared. Let it be equipped for reception. For receiving. I release the sound of the heavens, sound to creation. Shekinah is here. I release tonight the sound from the heavens, sound to creation. Shekinah is here. I prophesy into your secret place. The sound of the heavens, sound to creation, sound to your secret place. Shabana is here. Whether you are inside or you are outside, there is no distance. You came with an expectation to receive. Sound of the heavens, sound to creation, Shekinah the sea. Yeah, na 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 na. na 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 na. na 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 na. na 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 na.
Lord, tonight we are here with our hearts open to receive. We are full of expectations. Lord, may no one leave the same. May no one leave the same. Let the weakest among us, the weakling among us, become mighty men. Make us become great men. By the agency of the Spirit, raise mighty men from this place tonight that will be a blessing to their generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, if you can, be seated. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known, reveal the glory of the living one. Spirit of the ancient one, come and make your presence known, reveal. The glory of the living one. Spirit of the ancient king, will you come and make your presence known? Reveal the glory of the living one. Spirit of the ancient one. Come and make your presence known, reveal the glory of a living one. Spirit of the ancient king, come and make your presence known, reveal the glory of a living one. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom reign in us. Let the weight of your glory. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory fall. I heard the lion. I heard the lion. I am the Lamb of God. I worship the Lion. I worship the Lamb. I honor the Lion. I honor the Lamb. Hallelujah. Please, if you can be seated. Carrying the presence. Hallelujah. 
Regetula Bashata, Zepretikila Dadadabesh. Exodus 33. Exodus 33. Brothers and sisters, believe me, something will happen to you this evening. Some of you will step into dimensions of intimacy that will become like a cloth. That wherever you are, it looks like you are inside something. Believe what I'm telling you this evening. Carrying the presence, part one. I can see with the eyes of my spirit. I can hear a sound of a new church marching and I know these are the days of his spirit the nations will be willing the people will be willing hey. oh oh There is a place where my heart cries for love. There is a place I am yearning for. Bless. Is that your prayer tonight? Oh, it is a blessing. To belong to your secret, bless love. Let your glory 
be seated if you can. Lift your two hands. Father, give him something tonight to go back on with. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm seeing a young man at the back of the camera, at the back of the camera stand. Yo, there is a hunger you came with. And the Lord is telling me now he's satisfying that hunger. At the back of the camera, just help them there. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Please be seated. Exodus 33. Holy Spirit, come flow through me. You can just be seated calmly. You might not even have to sing. Just soak in the atmosphere. Holy Spirit. Come flow through me and make my life what it ought to be. Holy Spirit, come flow through me. Holy Spirit, come flow through me. Holy Spirit, come flow through me. Please be seated wherever you are. Just be seated. Just sit. Just sit. If there are people under the anointing, bring them out and let the people just sit. Holy Spirit, come flow through us. Holy Spirit, come flow through us. Oh, we are that generation that will partner with you and do wonders. Holy Spirit, come flow through us and make our lives what they ought to be. Holy Spirit, please the usher seat, protocol seat. I want total silence and calmness. Tonight's meeting might not be the usual. If someone is under the anointing around you, be your neighbor's keeper. Just be your neighbor's keeper and let's just ensure we maximize the atmosphere. Holy Spirit, come flow through us. Hallelujah. of God is so strong. Hallelujah. 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 Bring the mics down. Hallelujah. Sing with me. Bring it down. Lord outside right now, outside I'm in a vision, I'm seeing the angel of the Lord outside at the overflow and there are more than 21 persons outside you might just have to, the, the ground is bad after the rain but I'm seeing more than 21 persons outside receiving an impartation you are stepping into a dimension of God's glory and presence outside outside in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, let the hand of God just find them out. And may your lives never, never be the same. Holy Spirit. Ta -da -da. 
Exodus 33 from verse 1. Shalom. Let's just have peace everywhere. Shalom. I need you at all things in the fullness and I need you, I need you at all times, at all costs, at all costs, in your fullness and glory. That the valley of my life is how much of you I carry. It's not what people say. Ah. Uh-uh. And the impact of my life is how much of you people see. Yeah. The impact of my life is how much of you people see. We are these persons that you came with your wife. Um, we've been communicating through text. Where are you? Where are you? You came with your wife. Please come, 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 come. Traveled all the way from where. Come with your wife. Leave the children and just come with your wife. Let me pray with you. I just feel I should do that now before I start the teaching. I know a lot of people travel from far and near to be here. But let me pray with you. There is an atmosphere right now I'm carrying. We want you at all costs. Welcome. From where? Delta State. Hold my hand. Together, hold my hand. Hold my hand. Is there anything you desire from the Lord? It's coming on you right now. Is the presence of God. You will go with it and never, never be the same. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel it now in my palms. It's the anointing. It can be transferred. You can know when it is flowing. Have it. Have it. Have it. Have it. Go with it and never be the same. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Just drop her, drop her. You might not be able to struggle with her in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that the fire of God is on you. Your lives, your ministry never be the same. Never be the same. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Exodus 33. We'll read the first three verses and then jump to verse 12. I'm just going to lay the foundation tonight and then we continue next week. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou had brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. Next verse. And I will send an angel before ye, and he will drive out the Canaanite, the Ammonite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hevite, and the Jebusite. Three. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. This is where God is bringing them to a land 
flowing with milk and honey and I will not go up with you. Look at this dead man. The Lord is saying, I'm not going with you. I'm going to send angels to go with you. For thou art a stiff naked people, lest I consume you in the way. Jump to verse 12. After all the discussion that happened, look at Moses responding to God now. He responded as though God has not told him who he is sending with him. Look at this. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, you say unto me, Bring up these people. And thou hast not let me know whom thou will send with me. Is that true? The answer is not true. We read earlier, the Lord is already saying, My angel is going with you. Is that in your Bible? Now Moses is pretending as though he has not heard that from the Lord. Help me with the fifth time, maybe a little more. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast found grace in my sight. Next verse. I think you're having a problem with your system or something. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me thy way, that I might know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Let's read through to 15. And he said, my presence, my presence, my presence, my presence will go with you my presence will go with you and he said my presence will go with you and i will give you rest the other verse say if your presence is not going with us don't even carry us from here now listen carefully the presence of god is not just an atmosphere it's a personality the presence of god is not just an atmosphere is a personality. So it is first a person before it becomes an atmosphere. And that personality is the Holy Spirit. Everybody say the Holy Spirit. Say it one more time, the Holy Spirit. So who is the Holy Spirit? Let's start from there. Let me try to establish this briefly before we proceed into the teaching. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's not a dove. I want you to just pay attention. He's not the wind. He's not even a cloud. The Holy Spirit is not even power. The Holy Spirit is not oil. The Holy Spirit is not even tongues. This thing you see and then, in fact, the Holy Spirit is not falling down and, and rising and all of the things you are seeing happen. No. The Holy Spirit is a personality. He has a personality. He has a form. For many, they have believed in years that the Holy Spirit is a dove. No, the Bible tells us that when he descended on Jesus, he came in the similitude of a dove. He, came, he descended the way a dove descends. The gentleness in the way a dove descends is what was used to describe like a dove. He's not a dove. So when you get to heaven and ask, where is the Holy Spirit? They are not going to show you a bird flying all around restlessly. And then they say, okay, that's the Holy Ghost flying. No, 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 no. He's not a bird. He's not a bird. He's a real person. Real personality. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is not even ministry material. It's not a ministry material. For many people, they believe that the Holy Spirit is a ministry material. They use him to accomplish whatever it is they want to do. As soon as God is calling somebody into ministry, the first thing is, Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you. I know I can't do this alone. I need you. As sincere as that cry might be, if it is not, if it is not from a depth of revelation, you might cry that cry and still not meet him. Because for many, the only attempt I mean behind or the only force behind that prayer is just to carry him then if possible use him to climb and get to a height and then you are now a great man of God or you are now a great minister and then they are excited about it he's not a ministry material before partnership with the Holy Spirit there must be a relationship there must be there must be hallelujah Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. Let me explain to you who he is. He is the third person of the Godhead. He is the spirit of the Father himself. 
the Holy Spirit is equal to the Father, equal to Jesus in all essence and power. He is not the servant to the Godhead. For many, they think he's the third person of the Trinity, so he's the least among them. No, he's not the least. He's not the least. He's equal to God in power and in every essence. Remember that man is a spirit. Is that true? And he lives in a body. Is that it? Now, if the Bible and the real you is not your body, is that very true? As a matter of fact, let me say this. I've never seen you before. You've never seen me before. All I keep seeing every week is the house you live in. The real you lives inside of you. And now the Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. Meaning in reality, the Spirit of God is God. Because the real you is not your body. The real you is your spirit. For many people, they have downplayed his place in the church. For many, they say, no, we don't need the Holy Ghost. All we need is Jesus all we need is Jesus. Do you know that the coming of Jesus was to pave way for his return? That when God created man, the original plan was not for Jesus to be on earth. It was not even captured in the original plan that Jesus should come on earth. It was the fall that led to the coming. As soon as man fell, and then rebellion started, the Bible tells us that at some point the wickedness of man became so much and the Lord himself spoke from heaven. He said, my spirit cannot be again with the iniquity of men. And officially, the Holy Spirit left the earth in Genesis 6. He went back to heaven. And from Genesis 6 down to the book of Matthew 3 where he returned into Jesus as a person, not even to the church now. He officially left in Genesis 6. And then what happened to everybody that was used mightily in the Old Testament? Momentarily, the Holy Ghost came on them because of the assignment that was slated for them. And as soon as the assignment was completed, the Holy Ghost lifted and went back to heaven. He was not on earth. The wickedness of men chased him back to heaven. So the coming of Jesus was not an end. It was a means to an end. The real thing was not about the coming of Jesus. Uh -uh, uh -uh. The coming of Jesus was to reconcile you. Number one, redemption. Number two, to pave way for the return of the one that left. So watch this. If the Holy Ghost had not come after the death of Jesus, the death of Jesus would have still been useless. And I will prove it to you from scriptures. That if the, if the Lord himself had died, resurrected, then return back to heaven without sending the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't have been seated down here. I assure you that. You wouldn't have been a Christian. Because even after the Lord resurrected, the Bible tells us that the disciples still didn't believe him. Is that your Bible? After his resurrection, Peter told the disciples, let's go back to fishing. Because I still don't understand the scope of what this guy came to do. Let's go back to fishing. He carried them and went back to fishing. At the point of ascendance, he's about to leave them. The Bible tells us in Matthew 27, I believe, or 28, rather, verse 17, that while Jesus was talking with them, he's now resurrected. They saw him and still doubted him. He's about to leave back to heaven. Assignment completed. These are the ones he has trained for three and a half years. And the Bible said they looked at him like this and still doubted if he was Jesus. Peter denied him again and again before his very eyes. You would have done so without the Holy Ghost. And as soon as he returned back in Acts 2, remember the same Peter that denied him was the one that preached. He stood with boldness. That boldness is not gotten in a classroom. You don't get that boldness because you read books. No, no. There is an agency that comes into you. Listen, for many of you, you might be a very shy person. You might even be a very timid person, but as soon as you collide with the Holy Ghost, he can turn a weakling to become a mighty man. We have seen this again and again and again. That most of the men the Lord used mightily, right from the days of the Bible to the church age till now, we are not even very eloquent people, we are not even very smart people as it were. Many of them had limitations within them, but one encounter with the Holy Ghost turned a fisherman into an, I mean a general. It can happen to any man. I came from the village. 
I don't know how to speak English. All of those things are just jamborees. Demons don't understand English. They understand light. The reason why nobody knows me is because I didn't go to school. No, sir. The issue is not school. Don't blame things that are not even the reason. The problem is that you've not met and there is a personality you are yet to meet. The day you collide with him, you will realize that all the while you had an advantage you never used. He's our advantage. So Jesus came, died, and look at how he kept talking to them. He said, cheer up. I'm going back to the Father. And while he started communicating to them his return, the Bible says sorrow filled their heart. They were not happy. And Jesus himself is now surprised. I thought you should be happy. They are not happy. They are troubled because he's telling them I'm going back to heaven. And he said if I do not go back, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, my coming was to pave way for his return. And I will tell you why. He needed to return back. Because we are told in the book of Job that the spirit of the Lord has created me and his breath has given me life. It's in your Bible. And that the first personality man met in the Godhead was the Holy Spirit. Because when man was created, the body lying down, the Bible said the Lord breathed into man. What he breathed into man in reality was the spirit of God. The body of man, the senses of man collided first with the person of the Holy Ghost before he met his physical environment. So right from time, you have been used to relating with him. Right from time. This is why when your prayer life is going down, when your intimacy with him is going down, something in you begins to discomfort you. Does it happen to anybody? Because your spirit knows there is a vacuum. As soon as your prayer life is going down, you are restless. As soon as that intimacy is going down, you are restless. You yourself don't know why you are restless. You were configured to always have fellowship with him. That was your original configuration. Fellowship. Fellowship. So at the cool of the day, he will always come for that. So the Holy Spirit is God. In fact, we are told in scripture that he is the father of Jesus. Matthew 1 18. Maybe we'll have to read this and prove it to you. The Holy Spirit is the father of Jesus. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, everybody the last line want to read. She was found with the child of who? She was found with the child of who? Ah. When a woman is... I don't even know how to explain it, but do you understand the scripture? One of our dear ladies here is pregnant. Whose child is she carrying? Her husband. The child of Mr. Simon. That's it. My friend just got wedded and he was testifying very powerfully. Very soon there is going to be a miracle. Say amen. amen. The child of somebody is shouting amen with his strength. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Is the child of somebody. So we are now told that the Jesus you worship is Lord. That the father of Jesus is the Holy Ghost. And look at how the church have locked him outside. So we come to church and say Jesus coming but we lock the one outside that we are supposed to have inside. Many people have no wonder the church has become powerless. Powerless. Because listen, when Jesus resurrected, we are told in the epistles that he's seated right now, right now, at the right hand of the Father. We are in heaven, not here. So the one we have here with us is a paracletus. The Holy Spirit himself, that's the one we have here. So imagine Jesus is seated up there and you are down here. And the one you have with you here is the Holy Spirit, which is the easiest one to find. The one with you. Look at what we do in church. We jump the person of the Holy Ghost. And then we want to route it through other means. We want Jesus by all means. Meanwhile, meeting the Holy Ghost is meeting Jesus automatically. Because his ministry is to reveal Jesus to us. That you cannot even know the Christ himself without meeting the Holy Spirit. You will become a religious person when you have Jesus without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm telling you, you will be a religious person when you have Jesus 
without the Holy Ghost. He is the one that made Jesus real to you. Believe me. He is the one that explains Jesus to you. Trust your spirit of God. The Bible calls him the spirit of Christ. Even the spirit of yeah, Peter tells us he's the spirit of Christ. So whether you call him the spirit of God or the spirit of Jesus, you are still right. He sent him. We don't have two Holy Spirit, we have one. We have one. The one Jesus carries in his inside is the spirit of God. John 15, 26. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy, thou art welcome. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, the last line read together, which proceeded from the Father shall testify of me. So he comes from the Father. He proceeds from the Father. He is from the Father. He is the Spirit of the Father himself. When you have him, you have the Father. When you have him, I'm telling you, you have the Son. He's a real person. He has emotions, brothers and sisters. He's a person. You watch the playlet that was made here. The lady quoted Ephesians 4.30. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. It's in your Bible. So he can be grieved. He has emotion. And let me show you how you grieve him. Because there is a difference between the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost and grieving the Holy Ghost. And we are not going to talk about blasphemy. And let me now even assure you, it is difficult for a believer to blaspheme. So let your mind calm, be calm. It's a topic for another day. We might take our time to discuss that. But let me show you how a believer can grieve the person of the Holy Ghost. This guy is in his secret place. Let's assume he's kneeling, just kneeling. And he's having time with the Holy Spirit. He has been here for 15 minutes and he already is checking his time because he's supposed to go somewhere he has an appointment in the next 20 minutes so he decides to stand and while standing the holy ghost says, i'm not done can you add 30 more minutes and this guy kneels and he's looking at his time he said but the person i'm supposed to meet i have an appointment with apostle it looks like it's a very spiritual thing. Or he has an appointment with his father, his mother. Or an appointment with a business client. And he has to meet up. The time, And he started, remember when it is fellowship, you must have time. If you are in haste, you can't fellowship. It's not for people who are always in haste. No, no. When we talk about koinonia, fellowship, you must have time. If you are too busy, forget it. It's not for busy people. You must create that time. So this guy stands and he says, Holy Ghost, please, you have to bear with me. And as he's leaving, watch this. The Holy Ghost stands by because we are told that he's the advocate, he's the standby. Is that true? The word standby means he's not permitted to leave you so long as you are born again. Because leaving you means you are finished. If the Lord had not been by our side, the enemy would have done something to you. So, although now you are grieving him, he's now up and he's going to catch up with his appointment. The Holy Ghost is obligated to follow him. But as he's following him, he's not happy. Start going. I told you we're supposed to have time. Somehow, this guy began to feel guilty. He's feeling, it has happened to a lot of you. I'm only explaining what happens to you. I'm only explaining what happens to you. Then you are you don't even know why you are not happy. You go to meet the person, and then somehow the business clicks because he loves you. He loves you. He has plans for you. As you are returning, he starts trying to. Let me tell you something. And my father Apostle Salman says something. He says, if you understand women, you understand the Holy Ghost. So watch this. This guy is coming back. A virtuous woman. Don't get angry for too long. Believe what I'm telling you. 
The way we know a veteran's woman is that when she's angry, give her a little time. In fact, when you even go around and say, sorry, sorry, especially if it's your wife, and you tap and say, sorry, my dear, you know I love you, forget about all of this thing. Immediately, you want her heart back. So now he's coming back from his appointment. The Holy Ghost follow him again. And he will start whispering, she will have that time again. She will have that time again. Please, can we, can we, can we have that time a little? Can we have that fellowship again? If this guy now goes on his knees, the Holy Ghost is excited. And if he becomes busy again, the Holy Ghost stands. This is what it means for a believer to grieve the Holy Spirit. Grieving him simply means he's not exactly happy, but he's obligated to stand by you. It is his ministry, whom I consider this next to the ministry of the Holy Ghost, is one of his ministry to always stand by you. He has emotion. He has emotions. Remember the story of Benny Hill. Many of you have read his story. How that you'll be having time and it's about to go out. And the Holy Ghost will tell him five more minutes. Please, five more minutes. For many of us, the Lord has been telling us five more minutes. But you will not just hear. And many of you will tell you, it's my spirit that is talking to me. Come on now. Is your spirit that smart? You know, this thing applies in the prophetic. God is already talking to you. You think it's your spirit. Are you that smart? He has emotions. Can we give him time? I learned this thing in school. There were times I dressed, finished dressing for class. Finish dress. I'm in my black and white as a law student. I'm about to step out. The Holy Spirit will say, No, I will have to come back with my tie. I will lie there and I can be there for the next three, four hours. I'm there. Believe what I'm telling you. Believe what I'm telling you. There may be time you may have to tell some appointment. Just wait. Just wait. Because the value of your life depends on how much of him you carry believe me it's not in how many people people are talking here no no how much of him you carry for you are my diet and my necessary food your presence is all i need and i can live without you for you are my diet and my necessary food your presence is all i need and i can live without you lord you are my diet and my necessary food your presence is all i need and i can live without you Oh, 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 please take me deeper, Lord. Oh, 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 with you. Oh, 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 oh take me deeper, Lord. For you are my diet and my necessary food. Your presence is all I need and I can live. Lord, you are my diet. Your presence is all I need. And I can live without you. Maybe I share a few of my encounters with you. Maybe two or three. When I started having these experiences, it was strange to me. Strange. I remember there was a season I was praying in the bush. It was supposed to last, I think, for 14 days. So every morning I would finish dressing and I would run to the bush. I would be there till evening. 
one of those days i was going to the bush with my earpiece and i'm just worshiping i was still a student going and i'm just talking to the lord and worshiping and i felt a literal hand on my head literal believe what i'm telling you believe it literal hand literal on my head and guess what i did i waved my hand like this to catch that hand and there was no hand i turned there was nobody and the lord told me you are not alone believe what i'm telling you that's what inspired the teaching i've always done about you are not alone i've been teaching on the consciousness of a believer for more than three four years now that's where i got it from and i heard it you are not alone i said lord i became so humbled he's a real person believe me you can touch him he has a form he has a form for many of you think the holy ghost is just a wind he can pass by no he has a body like this you can touch him he can touch you you can feel him there were other times i would be worshiping in my room maybe with a keyboard and it would look like somebody just entered i, I, I don't know how to explain it to understand it looks like something just entered a part of me an atmosphere will enter me like this half of me is into somebody and i'll say lord you are here again and it was in those moments i would begin to feel sensation all around my body all around my head for many of you that's what's happening to you around this season you will feel sensations on your leg you don't even know what's happening you will feel it on your hands you don't know what's happening you will feel it on your hair you are walking for many of you while i came up you felt that you felt it is the presence of god believe me is the presence of god this is how my training started series of encounters i now started realizing that the holy ghost was not just a wind he was a person and that you could relate with him you could talk with him you could so i can be walking on the street and you hear holy spirit i love you i know i'm not alone i'm not i'm not holy spirit come flow through me Holy Spirit, come flow through me and make my life what it ought to be. Holy Spirit, come flow through me. Hallelujah. I just wanted to enjoy this atmosphere. Hallelujah. 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 relationship with him because you want anything go in because you want him everything can come on account of having him believe me we have advantages for working with him the holy spirit i love him dearly believe me believe me and if you think i'm lying when you see him asking he will confirm it i love it and i know what i'm talking about i love him i love him I've met him. I've had experiences with him. When he shows up, I can tell you he's around. Like right now, he's around. I can tell you. I know when he comes into my house in time of fellowship, I can tell you. And I'm going to explain something related to that. I can I can tell you. I can tell you. He's a real person. 
real person. Brothers and sisters, you will struggle as a believer and very soon, very soon, without this person I'm talking about now. For many of you, you I'm introducing him to you afresh. You've not heard anybody talk about him like this. And for many, you've heard again and again. I'm trying to solidify your convictions. Without him, very soon you will be tired of Christianity. Believe what I'm telling you. Not believe it. Why do you think people backslide? The guy has been loving the Lord for 12 years. After a while, he tells him, I don't even know what's happening. And he starts going back gradually, like a joke. The guy that used to teach Sunday school is no longer there. And you are wondering, but this guy was the one that taught me Sunday school when I was young. Christianity without the Holy Ghost will soon get you tired. Believe me, you will be exhausted. You will be tired. You, at some point, you will sit down and wonder, are you sure? What, are, what am I doing? Do I, do I even know where I'm going? Is an evidence that a personality is lacking in your journey. When I watch your life and I hear the way you talk about Christianity, about your journey with God, I can tell where the equation is missing. For many people, this is where the missing link is. So you sit down, once a while you think you are with him, after a while you are exhausted and you are wondering, he's not there. He's not there. He's not. You will fully be exhausted. I'm telling you, for many of you, what I'm saying now is your reality now. You'll be tired. You are wondering, this Christianity, do we even know where we're going? This, that's why you, this message came for you today. Because when you begin to have experiences with him, ah, ah, it becomes super exciting. For many of you, look at the way I, I was coming and I was so touched. I saw people coming in the rain. I saw people standing in the rain. I was so touched. Look at the crowd that still turned up all the overflows and the rain. What do you think was dragging you here? Even when the weather was not conducive. You knew there was something you were coming to touch. Listen carefully. I'm not trying to brag with anything, but listen carefully. If your secret place becomes like our meeting, you will always long for fellowship. The reason why you can abstain from your secret place for two days, three days, you've not had time with God, is because truly He's not there. When it is now Sunday, you carry you are excited about Sunday, you want to start coming. As soon as you have that experience with Him, that's how exciting your secret place becomes, brothers and sisters. I kept having that time with him right from morning. I was alone, enjoying at some point the atmosphere around my house was tense. I could not sit again. I was just going around. It was strings like this that was playing. He's a real person, brothers and sisters. Real person. Never ignore him. Never. When you ignore him, it's just for a while. You will be exhausted. For it's not by power, nor by might, but by... You see it now? By my spirit. Say the Lord. So whenever the Holy Ghost comes in a place, listen carefully, because this is why I want to join it together now. Whenever the Holy Ghost comes in a place, whenever his personality arrives in a place, the terminology used in church is that the presence of God is here. Listen carefully. As soon as he shows up and you can feel something a little, what you start saying, your attempt um, to explain his arrival is that the presence of God is here. So most time you hear worship in ministry, oh, I can feel the presence of God. He's all around. His glory. What they are trying to say is that he has arrived. He has arrived. He has arrived. So the presence of God is not a wind. It's actually a personality. When he arrived, that's the time we use to explain that he has arrived. Man of God arrived. Share he is supposed to be everywhere. Let me teach you something again a little. There are three dimensions of God's presence. Three dimensions of God's presence. Major three. Three major dimensions rather. Of the presence of God. Is he not supposed to be everywhere? Absolutely. Do we need to have him come again? Let me explain. I know you are a new creation person. But let me finish. There are three dimensions to God's presence. Maybe I give us some 139 verse 7 before I explain. Number one is the omnipresence dimension of him. Omnipresence. Omnipresence. It talks about his ability to be everywhere. At the same time, you just explain that he has a form. 
how can he be everywhere at the same time is that possible that's why he's called spirit he doesn't have a physical body the form he has is a spiritual form so he can be everywhere at the same time put up the scripture omnipresence whither shall i go from thy spirit an expert in the school of the spirit is talking a professor someone who has worked with the holy ghost for a while until he earned an office for himself a man after god's own heart so the man that is talking here is worth listening to he's not your reverend he's not your pastor i'm not even the one the one talking here earned an office for himself and that office was a man after god's own heart if for whatever reason there is going to be another person after God's one head is number two or number three this one is the closest and look at his testimony he has worked with God for a while and look at what he's saying he said where shall I go from your spirit can you imagine that then he said in case you don't understand the spirit I'm talking about where shall I go from your presence you now see it that the presence of God is a person so he used spirit and he's now using presence next verse let's read through let us read through 13 if i ascend up into heaven thou art there if i make my bed in hell behold thou art there so even in hell he's there how many presence his ability to be everywhere if i take up the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost part of the sea uh-huh even there shall thy hand lead me so you are even a director there i'm telling you and thy right hand shall hold me next verse if i say surely the darkness shall cover me using darkness to cover you even the night and i mean sorry even the night shall be light about me next verse yeah the darkness hideth not from thee but the night shineth as the day the darkness and the light are both alike hey <laughs> no shadow of turning they are both alike let's take 13 the last for thou has compassed my possess my reign sorry thou has covered me in my mother's womb so even before you came he was with you in the womb you were not alone you see it listen you've been too used to the presence of god to let him go now because from the womb you had him with you from the womb you carry his presence he has been with you from the womb letting him go now no no so the first dimension is omnipresence he can be everywhere he is everywhere number two the manifest presence that he's everywhere does not mean he's manifesting everywhere no matthew Matthew 18 verse 20 For where two or three are gathered together in my name Everybody There am I in the midst of them That the atmosphere automatically change Automatically When we gather in his name Wherever two or three are gathered This is the second dimension So watch this he was here before we came for the meeting is that true from morning till now he was here he was here but that when we came together something started happening that is not usual while you sat on your seat you started feeling something that is not normal in fact when you came in it was not as tense as what is it, i mean what it is now it, it keeps increasing it's called the manifest presence that when we gather and say in the name of the lord jesus he shows up and that dimension of him he's coming in another dimension he's coming to manifest something he's coming so that you know you are not alone and it's at that point you can begin to have manifestation of the spirit you can begin to have people fall under the anointing people get healed word of knowledge word of wisdom revelation of god's word all of this happen in this atmosphere manifest presence manifest presence so if you leave this environment and go to the other side of the road you will notice listen there are certain locations that are open portals and the reason that place became an open portal is because spiritual activities have happened in that territory for a while for a while so it has crystallized the reality of god in that place you will be lying 
if you say what you feel here is the same from what you feel at home no no for many of you who have a special place you call your prayer altar you will notice listen in case you've not paid attention go and try it if you have a special place in your house you call your altar i know everywhere should be your altar in your house however if you have a place like that watch this it is different when you kneel on that ground because it looked like upon that place it has become mount zion it has become better angels ascending and descending when you leave that environment although you are still in your house but the atmosphere there is different different manifest presence manifest presence so when we start worshiping you start feeling unusual for many of you you feel sensation for many of you as i talk now there are many things happening to you many things for many of you you are literally feeling it literally feeling it it's called the manifest presence that's the second dimension that although he's everywhere he's even in the beer parlor but dear he's not manifesting he's not he's not where two or three are gathered there am i number three this is the height of it the shekinah the shekinah presence that's the glory dimension of his presence he never leaves me he said that he won't forsake me help them he will beside me and that is all that matters that one cannot happen outside hope you understand now you see it you see what's happening this one cannot happen outside it's happening because there's a dimension of god that's manifesting manifest presence the sun won't smite me and the moon it will not hurt me you walk beside me and that is all that matters you never leave me you said that you won't forsake me you walk beside me and that is all that matters the sun won't smite me and the moon it will not hurt me For the Lord is my, my uncle Yahweh 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 Exodus 40 33. Ah, remember, I, 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 will, I may not be able to touch our text today because I'm just giving a foundation. I've not started with our text. Lord, help us. Thank you. Remember in our text, after God assured Moses, because He said, If your presence is not going with us, we are not going anywhere. Is that in your Bible? God now assured him that my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. If you read verse 18, I believe, Moses now turned around again and said, your glory. Is that your Bible? Meaning there is a difference between the presence of God and the glory of God. No, you have to believe this. If they were both um, alike or the same, he would have stopped there. After getting an assurance that my presence will go, he now said, okay, your glory, oh, the height of God's presence is the glory. Dogs are. Dogs are. The Shekinah. The Shekinah. The literal glory. And listen, this dimension does not happen every time. No. Ask great men of God. There are certain meetings they always remember. They will tell you, I was in, I was in, in Lagos, 95. And while the crusade was happening, the glory showed up and then this and that and that and that happened i've studied men of god and i've heard them make reference to certain meetings certain meetings certain meetings where people had literal gold dust 
literal visions with angels all kinds of things happen listen that is the height of it it's not just the manifest presence it's the shekinah listen when we step into that dimension it's at that point you don't have to pray for the cripple in that atmosphere he just stands and starts walking believe me believe me that is a difference you don't have to lay hand on cancer no for being in that atmosphere cancer dries up it's called the shekinah it doesn't happen every time no let me show you a few instances in the scripture give us that scripture exodus 40 and he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate so Moses finished the work and remember he was told to build according to pattern is that it? he has finished building according to pattern and then the Bible said a cloud covered the tent of the congregation and everybody remember, continue the reading and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle next verse ah and Moses was not able to enter into this is the height of it the height of it where the glory showed up shows up Jesus encountered it in Luke 9 when he was transfigured the Bible says he's there and then his face was literally shining even the cloth was shining when Peter saw it he said ah master it is good for us to be many here I like this dimension of glory but after a while help them at the back but after a while listen carefully the bible tells us that the cloud left even in this book of exodus after a while the bible says and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle but after a while he left also with you with you you don't carry this dimension forever no you don't carry it for too long no because it is weighty it can kill a man believe me believe me it can kill a man this dimension of god can kill i studied kenneth e hagin in the last part of his ministry kenneth e hagin walked in dimensions of god's presence that were unexplainable to a point he will finish one meeting and for three days three days please if you are seated around them just help them and let's avoid distraction listen for three days he will be lying down he cannot move because the glory on him is too heavy even in some of the meetings you see somebody guiding him some of you have watched the video someone will have to be guiding because he himself cannot stand and then after the meeting they will have to carry him like a log of wood drop him on the bed for three days he's lying down there when anybody gets close to the bed they fall he lies down there that's the shekinah if that glory remains on him for one week if it remains on him for 14 days he will literally die physical death not spiritual death physical death that that dimension can be weighty it can be weighty is the shekinah and we are trusting god that in these last days when the revival that has started gets to his peak it will no longer be one here and there no 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 no, no. come on now no no it will be the glory of God. Remember the Bible tells us that the glory of the Lord will fill the air like the waters covers the sea. That's what he was trying to explain. That there is coming a point where my people will not just leverage on my, my normal, nominal, manifest presence. They will now walk in dimensions of glory. Glory. That was what Peter carried that day. That the Bible said he was passing and his shadow was healing the sick. Shadow healing the sick. And we were not told that it happened again it happened once this kind of occurrence don't happen always believe me i'm not even sure we've had that kind of experience here yet maybe once or twice we after the meeting there was a meeting that people had to sleep here because when when they recovered from themselves the time was already late they had to sleep over We've had one or two kinds of those kind of meetings here and there. But brothers and sisters, we are coming into an age where it will become a normal thing. I'm telling you, normal thing. The age of the glory. The age of the spirit. The Shekinah. The literal Shekinah. Dogs are. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. I want your glory 
Less of me and more of you is what I want. Show me your glory and me the glory. Less of me and more of you is what I So many times I've tried my way, but all of the pains didn't go away. I realized it only you can give me this love that is so true. I need your glory. Show me your glory, less of me. Let of me and more of you is what I need. One more time, I need your glory. I need your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Less of me. Less of me and more of you is what I Moses said, now you are allowing us to go. Who is going with us? And the Lord said, the angels will go with you. For many of you, you've had encounters with angels, but that's not all that there is. For many, we've camped around certain experiences and we are okay with it. Moses would have said, all right, uh, uh, the, the angels going with us, I think that's fine. We are, we are very okay. To be seeing angels, we are very okay. Moses said, no way. If your presence is not going with us, we are not leaving this place. I want that to be somebody's pride this night as I try to find somewhere to wrap up. That, oh God, I didn't come to this meeting to just go back the same. No, I know I've touched a dimension of God. I know I've touched a dimension of your spirit. I know I've had an encounter with you in the past. I know so many things have happened around my journey with you. But I know there can be more. I know there can be more. I know there can be more. I know somehow, somehow, someone has been healed along the way. But oh God, there can be more. There can be more. I've watched one deaf ear open. Lord, I know two deaf ears can open. I've watched one blind eye open. Two can open. I know cancer has been healed. But kidney can be healed also. I refuse to settle here. I refuse. I refuse. He insists like Mo Moses models my hunger for God. Believe me. Each time I look at Moses, I'm saying, my God, what kind of person is this? Angels will go with you. You are not okay? He said, if your presence is not going, forget it. I'm not going anywhere. And finally, the Lord said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. In fact, you will be different from everybody you meet on the road. It looked like Moses should be satisfied. He turned around again and said, it's not okay. I need your glory. The manifest dimension the Shekinah listen it was after Moses made that appeal that the literal cloud started going before them yeah cloud going before them by night pillar of fire by day pillar of cloud it happened when Moses made an appeal I'm not okay with feeling it I want to see it I'm not okay with, with sensing it by faith I want to have real experiences Listen, 2009, when I went to school, that first year was a very, I've, I've shared that first year experience with a lot of you and again and again. And I'll keep saying it because that experience changed my life. I, I, I've heard that and that was the moment, the period I read Good Morning Holy Spirit. No, is that a book? Yes, that's a book. Huh? Yeah, Good Morning by Benny Hill, right? I had given out maybe 200 copies of that book to people because I knew how it changed my life I have more than 15 or there about in my office I keep giving it to anybody that looks serious you know why? it changed my life I read that book when I was entering the university I had an encounter that book was an experience for me when I entered and I told the Lord I said Lord if what I've read in this book is true if what Benihin is saying is true that you are about Benihin is about leaving his room a literal hand will hold him and say please come back five more minutes I said Benihin are you kidding me when did that one happen 
I read his encounters and experiences and I went. My prayer time was 3 a.m. And almost every night I was awake. Almost every night I was using alarm. It came to a point where alarm was not even waking me. Two minutes to my alarm, a literal hand will tap me. And I will feel the tap. It's not like by faith. A literal hand will tap me. And I will wake up. And my eyes will be clear. And then listen to the story. I will now have my time with the Lord. And amazingly, it was not much. It was just one hour. At most one hour, 20, 30 minutes. When I'm finishing my prayer, towards the end, I, I usually look forward to the end of that prayer. Because the first um, 15 minutes was just Thanksgiving. 30 minutes was intercession. This ministry was built on the platform of intercession, brothers and sisters. I was praying for the body of Christ, praying for churches even when I was not preaching. I kept doing that, praying for the campus. So, at the end of my prayer, it was usually communion and fellowship. I will start worshipping. I will sing songs. I will worship. And I will just keep flowing. And after a while, after a while, one month, two months, three months, I said it earlier, if you are in here, you won't meet him. Now, you have to be consistent. After a few months, it came to a point where I'm in my room worshiping like that. One fateful morning, and I saw my curtains shaking. I didn't have fun. I did. My first year, what was fun? These guys know me, they are smiling. I didn't have fun. I'm telling you, I saw my curtains shaking. I had to stand. I went to my window and checked whether the window was open. It was closed. My, my curtain is shaking. The, the curtain on the door is shaking. My God. I said, Lord, what's here? And I, I, I sense in my spirit something is about to happen. I just lay there and I kept worshipping. Before you know, I started vibrating and shaking. And the personality is in my room. It started that night. And every night it kept happening. When, when I come to the close of my prayer, I will know when that personality steps into my room. And the curtains will shake again like that. And I will feel the sensation. I will start shaking in my body. Brothers and sisters, it kept happening again and again. It became encounters upon encounters upon encounters. The secret place became something we always look forward to. Brothers and sisters. All of this issue of I don't feel like praying today. No, not back then. No, no, no. It, 3 a.m. became a time I looked forward to because my prayer time was not dry. No, it was not this kind of no, 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 no. Consistency. It happened for years. It happened for years. These are the kind of things that brought the encounters. And this dimension of the presence of God you enjoy in this place. These are the kind of experiences that brought about them. You must refuse tonight. Oh Lord, I'm not satisfied. No, I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. Like Moses. As a result of his hunger. Moses had literal encounters where his face was shining had encounters where he was taken to the heavenly tabernacle and he was given the pattern on how to replicate it here on earth giving the pattern brothers and sisters i know you are not a pastor but god can give you word of knowledge in chemistry believe me the holy ghost can give you a word of knowledge in economics the holy ghost can give you your problem is that you think the only thing the holy ghost does is that he made people fall down make them wake up and then throw them here and jail and people are falling while i teach no 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 the holy ghost can give you an idea in business that turns your life around the holy ghost remember when he came on bezalel bezalel became an exceptional person so even if his hand work one encounter with him can turn things around in your life hallelujah it's rain again don't worry showers of blessing wherever this rain touch something i've touched you for whatever just find a way to come in if the rain is very heavy find a way to come in just come 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 allow them to start give them way just come just come just come come the presence of god lord how are we going to keep this crowd just coming coming be very fast about it coming you can even sit anywhere. Yeah, come in, come in. Some of you who are very humble enough can find anywhere and sit anywhere on the ground. Just come. Just come. God bless you. 
God bless you. There should not be restriction. Let them come quickly. Quickly. Ah, God bless you. Sorry. Sorry about this. Sorry. Sorry. Why are you stopping them? Come, come, come quickly. There are space here. Protocols. Give them way. Give them way. Let them come. Let them come. Come, 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 come. You can sit anywhere. Just ensure. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Please come. Oh, my God. You are standing. Come, come. You could come around here. Come. After all, when Jesus was teaching, he was usually on the ground, the seat. Just come, find find a place and sit. Why are people not coming towards this way? Come quickly, come. You can, I think there's this space here. Just find anywhere and sit. Dear Lord. Don't worry, rainy season is going already. God is faithful. Amen. You are saved there. Yeah? God bless you. That means I can continue my teaching. There is no closing today. Say amen. <laughs> Hence, I was about wrapping up because of time. We can just continue. There are still people outside. Sorry about that. Sorry. Don't worry. These are the testimonies you will share with people in years to come. Lord, believe it. The Bible says in Malachi, it says you will return and see the difference between they that serve the Lord and they that do not. So with this thing you are doing, watch out and see what your life will come. Hallelujah. I love you all. Did I see you go outside? Still people, my God. How about here? Guys, all of you stand up at the front row. Stand up. Oh, no, no, no. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I mean those sitting here. Stand up. Come quickly. Come quickly. This way. This way. I'm, I'm ordaining you automatically. Fine. Give them space to pass. All of you are ministers today. Come. Find somewhere and sit. Look at that guy. <laughs> Just come. Come. Uh, yes. Uh, you know yourself. Just find a way and... Uh, you can, you can, Prince, you can join them. Then let's have people just sit. There are no people on this road. What's happening to this place here? What's happening to this place? Why are there no people here? Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. What's happening to my seat? Ah, Prince, you can sit on my chair now. <laughs> Why are you deserving it? Is there anything special about the chair? Yeah, what's your team? You can come. Yeah, God bless you. Worship team, you can come and stand. Whether you are not backing up, just stand. We are loving people and we love you. This seat is empty. Why? Let's have somebody sit there. Sorry. I feel like... I don't know what I feel now. But I love all of you. Hallelujah. There are still people outside that you should shift forward a little. Come this way. Those of you down, come this way. Come this way. Shift, come. Those of you behind the camera, come this way. Come. They are so crowded here, and I'm asking why there are no people on this road. Yes, come in, come in this way, come in. Uh, stand, you can do some, something like that. Come in, just shift forward. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. So sorry. For he never leaves us. He said that he won't forsake me. He was beside me. And that is all that matters. The sun won't smite me. And the moon it will not hurt me. The flood won't sweep me. 
and that is all that matters you are the covenant keeping God oh the covenant keeping God Yahweh Yahweh the covenant keeping God Oh. All right, are we fine? Let me explain one more thing and then um, your feedback is no longer working. Let me, let me explain one more thing and, and we close. Is it closed now? When I close, how will you go home? But hope you are getting blessed. Moses received an instruction, I think it's fine, from God. He was taken. Remember, he went to the mountain top and spent. I think I should be preaching and turning now. My God, it's like the nest of the children will build. We have a way of turning around. Moses was with the Lord on the mountain top for forty days, and the Bible said he returned and brought the commandment he was bringing, and he had to go back again on the second time. Who is under the anointing? Tap him to come down. Let's teach the word of God. Say amen. <laughs> he received a pattern of the tabernacle and that's what I want to explain to you and then we'll find somewhere to pray and he was asked to build that tabernacle according to pattern and where we read in the book of Exodus it was when he finished building that tabernacle according to pattern that the glory showed up that there is a protocol to entering the Shekinah dimension of God there is a pathway you don't enter it because you want to no 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 no. you enter it because you know the formula you enter it because you know the pathway hallelujah and now look at the look at the 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 the, the picture of the tabernacle when you came into the tabernacle there was just one gate one entrance there were not two doors no no no, no. one door and it is applicable to our age now that door is christ remember jesus speaking he said i am the way is that in your bible the way and no man can come to the father except through me so you don't become a christian because um you were born into a christian family no you don't become a christian because um something here and there happened you become a christian because you accept jesus the only legal means legal way pathway to the father is jesus and that tabernacle was a picture of the christ so it had one door everybody must enter through that door and as soon as you stepped into the tabernacle look at me you had two major things at the first partition it was a large space outside there and you had the altar the bronzing altar and you have the lava it was like a basin where they wash them the altar was where they offer bone sacrifice and that signified the judgment of sin so each time someone commits sin and he wanted to be forgiven he will bring something and they offer it on that altar and as the incense the smoke rise to heaven god will inhale it and then he will be comforted with the offense of that man and he will be forgiven that was what usually happened on that altar and beside it there was a basin where you come to wash your hand from all the blood and the everything in that basin there was a mirror underneath and then when you are washing you look at it and see the picture of yourself so the more you come there to wash the more you see yourself and remember we are it was a place of cleansing because you wash your hand and we are told in ephesians 5:26 that the word of god has the ability to cleanse us is that it everybody said transformation yeah so after forgiveness the altar where your sins are taken away the next thing you saw by the side was the basin where you wash your hand transformation cleansing where you are washed and then as you behold you become remember we have that scripture in the new testament that was the reflection because when you wash your hand there the mirror underneath show you your picture it shows you the degree to which you are becoming changed it shows you the degree to which you are becoming cleansed and the bible says as we behold him we are changed in the mirror we are changed it was a reflection of that scripture but that was not all that there was as soon as you left the first partition there was another door that led to a place called the holy place everybody said the holy place 
And as soon as you entered into the holy place, we had three major things. Number one, by the side, you met, I mean, you meet the, the lamb, the menorah, the, the lamb that had the seven candlesticks. And it is called the seven spirits of God. Someone have asked me again and again, do we have seven Holy Ghost? No. Or do we have seven Holy Spirit? No. He is one, but his operations are multifaceted. Right? He is one, but the ways of his manifestation can be multidimensional. So there was one stick down. And then on top of it, there were seven candlesticks. And there was light on them every now and then. The Lord gave an instruction that light should never go out from those candlesticks. So there was always light on them. And then opposite it, there was the table of showbread. There was a bread kept there. It is also called the bread of the presence. Remember when David was running away from Saul. The Bible said he entered the tabernacle and met a priest, Ahimelech. And he told him, do you have any bread here? I want something. Me and my men are traveling. How many of you have read that story? And the priest told him, we don't have a normal bread. The bread we have in this house is the bread of the presence. You don't eat it. You don't have access to it. If you are contaminated, it's for priests who are purified. So you meet it opposite the candlesticks. So this signified the spirit of God and his multifaceted oppressions. And then opposite it was the showbread that represented the word of God. Everybody said the word of God. And ahead of it, just before the cutting that brings you into the holy of holies was the altar of incense. It signifies the place of prayer. And let me show you how this thing works because it applies to your life although we are in the new testament we are now in the new testament church it looks like that is outdated but it still applies to us let me give you an illustration there are times you are in your house studying the word of god few of you will relate to this if you are truly a person of a secret place watch this you are here studying the word of god and while you are studying a scripture hits you and as soon as that scripture hits you you are with the word of God sitting and studying. As soon as it hits you, you don't know when you carry your Bible. And you start praying around your room. You've cut, there's light released on you. So this is what happened. While you were studying, you were, you were by the table of the showbread. Then a light from here by the spirit jumped into your spirit. Because listen, it takes the Holy Ghost to see light in scriptures. So the candlesticks, the candlesticks we are kept opposite themselves. Opposite. So while you are here eating the word of God, eating the word of God, and remember I've taught you that revelation is the product of consistency. So even when you are studying and you are not understanding, please don't leave, remain there. You are there studying, then light comes on you and a scripture you've been reading for two years. This is exactly how that scripture came on me. Acts of the Apostle 1044. While Peter yet spoke, the Holy Ghost came on the people. I saw that scripture some few years back. And while I saw it, I stood up in my room. Mata la da bakata. I never knew there is a scripture like that. Although I've read through it again and again. So as soon as that light hits you, it moves you to the altar of incense, the place of prayer because the only way you activate a revelation and make it become your experience is in the place of prayer it's in the place of prayer so now you've seen it that I shall not die but live and declare the words of the Lord and people have been dying in your family you never knew there was a scripture like that or maybe you've read but it didn't just occur to you now you are studying it and all of a sudden those two lines just stands out from your Bible and it becomes extra bold and it looks like you've never read through it before. All of a sudden it starts making sense. With the revelation that you've received, anger rises in you. You say, ah, I shall not die. Why are people dying in my family? And then there is this thing that rises in you. Shatabalatakaya. Brandos kabaritaka. From now in the name of Jesus, I decree that everybody in this home is immune. You are not just speaking because you are a Christian. You are speaking because you've encountered light. And it's on the strength of that light that there is a performance. Not every confession is powerful. Confession backed up by revelation is what makes results. Believe what I'm telling you. 
there are people who kept shouting i shall not die and they still died i cannot be poor they still became poor they died poor why what they were saying they had no basis from the word of god they had not seen it they were only shouting when you sit with the word of god and light comes on it it moves you to the place of prayer so you had the menorah the light stand you had the shortbread and ahead of it was the altar of incense and right before it was the curtain so for you to enter let me relate it back again with what i said the three dimensions of god's presence when you enter the tabernacle the first space you see outside everybody say manifest presence i'll be sorry what is verse one omnipresence that's what you find outside then when you step into the holy the holy place what you find is the second dimension of god's presence which is the manifest presence there was another dimension ahead that one nobody entered there it was just the high priest that enters and he enters once in a year once everybody say once you don't enter there twice you enter once and before entering he will have to be purified and even at that in order to be on the safe side they will tie a chain around his waist and put a bell so he will enter and open the curtain and enter right into the holy of holies in that place was the ark of the presence or the ark of the covenant that ark that ark represents the presence of god it was in the holy of holies right inside so before he enters he has to be purified and as soon as he enters there was blood in his hands he goes in with blood he's careful you don't enter when you are guilty of any sin you you enter quietly and as soon as you open you see the act you pour blood on it before you say anything so that while god is looking down from heaven even if you were guilty he no longer sees you what he sees is the blood and remember the bible said when i see the blood i will pass over it was it was a prophetic thing very prophetic because if he didn't do that and he was guilty as soon as he enters and talk it was the holiest place of all his sin alone will kill him he will die there and nobody can enter to bring him out the only way to bring him out is to use that rope that was on his waist to draw him out so if they attempt to draw him maybe he stays there for two days three days and he's not coming out they attempt to if he shake the bell and the bell rings what is telling them outside i'm still alive don't worry we are communing with god if they draw the rope and he doesn't shake it he's just there this guy is dead when he entered only him and god know what he did they will have to draw him out so he will enter with blood and pour it when jesus died the bible tells us that jesus was our high priest and he had to drain his own blood and that's exactly what he went to do in the heavenly tabernacle back to our, our story of the tabernacle you didn't just enter into the holy of holies you didn't just enter you have to be clean and as soon as you enter there there was only one thing the ark he said above the mercy seat in between the cherubims dear i will meet with you it was a place where god met men it was a place where god met men nobody entered there that was a dimension of presence that nobody could carry but watch this as soon as jesus died the bible tells us that when he shouted it is finished something happened in that temple is that your bible that the curtain that usually separates the ark from the people the bible said it was torn it was torn from top to the bottom and then that thing that was hidden was now available to everybody so right now it's not just me that can carry this dimension i'm carrying even you can carry it everybody can carry it everybody can carry it when jesus died on the cross the bible tells us that a soldier came to break his legs and he realized that jesus was dead already but he used a spear to open his side is that your bible and as soon as his side was open the bible tells us that water and blood goes out blood signifying the forgiveness of your sin water signifying the outpouring of the holy ghost you see it 
is so significant and powerful very powerful and watch this the tearing of his flesh for water to come out is exactly what happened to that cotton because that cotton was a four layer cotton it was so thick as soon as they tore it the presence of God that has been hiding from people was available to everybody available available so right now you and I can access that dimension of God the Shekinah the Shekinah and when you step into that dimension there was no literal light there no no in the holy place you had the seven candlesticks in the holy of holies there was no literal physical light but 24 hours there was brightness there God himself was the light of it God himself and because of the dimension of God's presence that was available there the Bible tells us that God instructed them to keep the manna which they ate in the wilderness and remember that manna after one day to get rotten is that your Bible but for being in the ark the manna remained there for 40 years and never got spoiled never went bad and the rod of Moses was kept in that same ark and the Bible said overnight when they went to check it it had fruit in it the fruit were ripe for consumption this is what it means there is a dimension of God's presence you carry and nothing is dry around you nothing is dry around you believe me believe me can it apply in my finances yes can it apply in my academics yes can it apply in my career yes can he apply in my relationship yes there is a dimension of God's presence you carry and nothing is permitted to die in fact the things that are dead start coming back to life the Bible said that water flow and wherever and whatever was dead came alive the book of Ezekiel it came alive we want to pray and I want to trust the Lord I don't know how this is going to happen but wherever you are standing and sitting in the next few minutes I want to pray that a dimension of God's presence be opened up to you this night it should be opened up to you this night for many of you who have lost touch with the person of the Holy Spirit our time is truly up I want to pray there is going to be a restoration many of you will leave the outer outer court you are about to step into the holy place in your work with god one time i listened to benihim preaching and he was trying to explain something around here he said when you are in the place of prayer and you are tired maybe you are now sweating and you are exhausted and your body is telling you stop like that go away tell your body no i know you are tired let me go and wash you enter the bedroom bath come back and kneel there because in this new church in this new season we are in listen carefully there is no literal curtain that will open up for you it will be in the place of prayer one day you have stepped into a dimension you don't even know you have stepped into that's how it happens that's how it happens for many of you who are ministers they will only invite you to one casual meeting because they know you are not even a very serious man of God or maybe all this while you didn't look like one but you've been having quality time with God they will casually invite you to a meeting come and sing for us you have just 12 minutes you have just 15 minutes and you will stand in that meeting and say lord i have 12 minutes let me do what i used to do in my secret place father we love you father we love you that's the reason behind me singing and you see people under the anointing what i'm trying to do is that i'm trying to bring my secret place to the open when this become your life you will stand one day like that to minister and like a joke it's at that point you will know that you've left where you used to be something has opened up you've stepped into another dimension it might not be announced to you no angel might tell you you might not have any encounter that proves it but your result eventually will begin to justify you believe me people can doubt you when you talk but when you produce result nobody can doubt you I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It is needless to keep arguing. I have it. No, 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 no you don't have to argue. Uh, it's happening. No, you don't have to. It's needless to argue. It's needless to try to prove a point. As soon as the result is obvious, the best way to respond to your world is not by argument, but result. 
and we're going to pray. I don't know, you don't, you, I don't think you might have to stand. Just remain, let this be a strange meeting this evening. I want you to just talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord, I want to carry something now. What we did this evening was laying the foundation and we'll continue next week. Pray wherever you are. If you are still hanging outside and you can hear me, pray. You are inside. Talk to the Lord. I hunger and thirst for you. Just talk to the Lord. In a dry end where we land. I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry end where we land. I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry end where we land. All I want is you. Hey. All I want, all I want is you. All I want is you. Yeah. I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land, I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land, all oh, I want just how people be around you. All I want is you. All I want is you. Yeah. All I want. All I want is you. All I want is you. Oh, all I want. All I want is you. Now listen, listen. I want you to pray in this direction one more time, and I will speak about our lives, and we are done. I'm sure the rain is reducing already. All right. One more prayer, and I will pray with us. You will pray. You, you are the one that know what you do. You know what you are called to do. Oh God, I want to have your presence in my career. I want to carry another dimension of you in business, in my marriage, in my academics, in my career, in whatever you do. Say, Lord, another dimension. All I want is you. 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 All I want. All I want is you. 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 All I want, all I want is you. 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 Rata barana masotesha, ya la barana nenyo sala. Rabba 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just open your palms, open your hand, open your palms? Yeah. There might not be space to stand or or lift your hands or something, but just put your hands before you. I want to pray. For many of you, you will literally feel the things I started feeling long time ago. Some of you, it is from this meeting, you will know what it means to experience the presence. It's from this meeting, you will know. For many of you, when you return back from now, from this meeting, you are entering a dimension of God you never believed was possible. Believe it. Believe it. Many of you will touch people with your hands when you leave this meeting and they will attest there is something about you now that is not normal. Believe it. Some of you have people who are sick at home. You will go back like a joke and touch them playfully. You will be surprised what happens. There are going to be proofs that this thing I'm teaching is the word of God and it's real. For every hand stretched, O oh God, young and old, great and small, let me hear the sound of a keyboard. I stretch forth my own hands, such as I have, I give. Such as I have, I give. If anybody else under the anointing around you, you might just have to help them. Such as I have, I keep. Father, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, O oh God, let every hand stretch, touch something. Let there be a release of virtue, your presence, your presence, another dimension of your presence, another dimension of your presence. Another dimension of your presence in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everybody is having it at the count of three, is touching everyone. One, two, three, receive it, receive it, receive it. It's not exactly about falling, it's about something coming on you. Receive it. A dimension of God's presence, a dimension of God's glory. A dimension of God's presence. A dimension of step up. Do better. Do well in your academics. Do well in finance, in business, in ministry. Do well. Do well. Do well. Do well. Shada bakare da bakos sabrati. Lembra koto bokosila. Yente barata bakos komela da 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 I pray for everyone in the name of Jesus from now from now whatever you lay your hands to do prospers believe me from now on if you are a career person you rise to another level of influence and result in business and in finance you rise to a new level of influence and result in ministry you rise to a new level of result He came on Bezalel and he became super exceptional. He came on timid apostles and they became exceptional. I pray in the name of Jesus for anyone here that is a weakling, you are becoming a strong person this night. You are becoming a strong person this night. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Your hands are stretched. Can you just be still for a moment? Just be still for a moment. Father, the Bible says, and Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, receive it now. Receive it now. Some of you will feel the sensation for the first time in your hands, on your head, in your body, on your legs. Receive it now. It's a touch of the Spirit. May this open you up to a dimension of God encounters, experiences, visitations, like never before, like never before, like never before, like never before. From now, encounters upon encounters, encounters with the person of the Holy Spirit, 
encounters with his presence in the name of the Lord Jesus go and never be the same whatever was dying in your hands the Bible says overnight the rod of Moses burdened it produced fruit whatever was dying in your hand whether ministry finance career academics whatever from this night I give life to it by the spirit I give life to it and if there be anything in your life that don't need to be alive tonight it dies also tonight it dies also whatever looks like an attack against your spiritual life in the name of Jesus tonight it is over it looks like it's an attack against your ability to be consistent when you are becoming consistent something just hold you back so it's like two weeks in one week out from this night enough of it grace is released on you this night grace is released on you this night in the name of the Lord Jesus go and do well in Jesus mighty name and amen all right with the way this meeting is I'm about to close now. We won't do all of the normal. I would have welcomed people who are giving their life to Christ. But wherever you are, listen to me. Let everybody just remain still. Wherever you are, you are not born again. You don't have to come out. I think it makes it better for some of you. It's just to pray this prayer after me. And believe me already, you are born again. And as I talk now, the Lord is already talking to your heart to pray this prayer. You have to pray it. Wherever you are, I want to welcome you to this big family of faith. And I want you to pray this prayer sincerely from the depth of your heart. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he died for me. And by faith, I receive into my heart eternal life. Thank you for saving me. I'm born again. And I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me. Amen. And amen. I pray for you wherever you are. And I decree in the name of Jesus that Satan loses claim over your life. And may the name of the Lord be named upon you. From today a new beginning has come for you. May you be planted and rooted in this grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray that from now your walk with God will become strong. In Jesus name. We hope you've been blessed by this message. Keep walking in grace. For additional information, follow us on our Facebook page. Or you could visit us on our Telegram page, Family Worship Experience International.